Hello and welcome to Guy Logic Gaming. My name is Temko and this is Starfighter Origin, developed and published by Mad About Games or MAG Studios. It is a old school style Wing Commander esque space combat simulator where you are in a cockpit, fly around a set of planetoids, fly of asteroid belts, sets of solar systems, kill enemies, follow storylines, destroy pirates, and try and dock your ship in the most annoying hangar ever. Before we dive into the gameplay, I want to take a look at the controls, the game options and talk a little bit about that because this game is having some issues in my opinion and I'm not having a lot of fun playing it due to those issues. So let's go ahead and dive into some video and graphic options. It's fairly straightforward. You can change your gamma, your AA, your post processing, your shadows and you can flip between the texture quality. V-Sync is heavily recommended otherwise you need to use G-Sync or FreeSync or Adaptive Sync of some kind because without this this game has some of the worst screen tearing I have personally encountered as well as some serious rendering frame stutter issues as if the frame timings are all out of whack. Some resolution options, though by no means a full set, it does have full screen windowed, which is always good. Other than that, you have some game options that allow you to track ER and some other head tracking and positioning abilities. I have no idea how this works or if it works properly because I do not have the tools here to do this comparison, so keep that in mind, but it is available if you are into that sort of thing. The game says they have full support for things like flight stakes and hocap equipment, but Again, I do not have that equipment, so I can't really test any of that. I can say that the mouse and keyboard controls are some of the worst I've ever encountered. And I finally resort to playing on a Steam controller, which I had lying around to sort of get some enjoyment out of the title. Why are the controls then so absolutely dreadful? Well, if we head over the controls, you can see that it can invert pitch and pitch normal. So you can change the pitch you want. And it shows you the controls here for the Xbox controller. And if you're looking at this, you might be thinking, well, that seems about straightforward. Sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and customize some buttons. And I'll talk to you about some of the issues I've encountered with this system. Because as I said, the mouse and keyboard controls are annoying at best. There's a good reason for that that while the game has rebindable keys, it has rebindable keys for the movement access, so the pitch, the roll, the thrust and the jaw, which you can shift to the various buttons you want anywhere on your keyboard, anywhere on a gamepad, which you're gonna have to do because by default, they're bound to the Xbox gamepad. So if you wanna use a HOTA system, if you wanna use a mouse and keyboard, if you wanna use a Steam controller, whatever else you wanna use, you're gonna have to manually rebind every single key your movement and that's going to take you definitely some trial and error and lots of frustration as you try and figure out what actually might work because obviously you're not familiar with the game and playing it with a non-working key binding configuration is absolutely abysmal so you do have full rebindable keys here which is good do not get me wrong the fact of the matter though is that they do things like gamepad left thumbstick y axis with pitch and roll there is no way for me to bind my mouse movement so my actual movement of my mouse to any movement controls neither realigning my ship, no aiming, nothing of the sort. I have to either set that to my keyboard and then use like my all fire and primary fire on my mouse or something like that, or use a gamepad and then use the D-pad and thumbsticks to use the actual movement and aiming, which yeah, sure, if you're playing on a console, you're gonna have to deal with the D-pad. And if you have a HOTA system, you can use that. But if you have a mouse and keyboard, you wanna use your mouse for, you know, the mouse stuff, which is aiming, which is directional movement. Sure, I can deal with trust and strafing being on my WS and D keys. In fact, I expect that to be there. But the fact that this game has all the weird buttons everywhere and it allows control and alt and shift being used as keys extra on top of that, it just doesn't do a very good job of doing so, especially because the mouse support is so absolutely lacking. So that is my big gripe in regards to keyboard and mouse control. The fact that it has full row bindable keys obviously is in its favor. In fact, you do have to rebind all the keys and there's no presets available it is frustrating to say the least. There is a test flight system where you can easily check out keys. So that is good. Otherwise, you're going to have to go into the trial mode and for some of the first trials, which you need functional keys to work with, have a lengthy intro that does it every single time and it's non-skippable. So what does the game offer in terms of gameplay? Well, there are a couple of issues with that as well and I like getting those as we dive into gameplay. But first things first, there is a campaign mode. How long it is, I couldn't tell you because I encountered some issues with it. There's a simulator mode that has a bunch of tutorials that sort of explain the game to you. I am very pleased with the basics tutorial and the combat tutorial. Uh, the minefield tutorial is great if you just want to get used to movement control in space and the asteroid tutorial is absolutely useless in my opinion it doesn't really benefit in any way shape or form and then you have some combat tutorials where it tries to give you different ways of fighting and different types of enemies to deal with overall these tutorials are not bad at all 
and I do recommend and I do urge you to use them. In fact, the game locks you from starting the campaign if you haven't completed the first four tutorials, which I think is a very good design decision from the developers. One of the very few good design decisions from these developers. You have a challenge mode where you can do a bunch of challenges based on what you prefer. And then you have to deal with waves or kill the specific pirate fleet or a bunch of different stuff. And you get some achievements for doing so. Pretty straightforward. And then you have instant action that lets you go into an instant combat mission and deal with three degrees of difficulty that always have a bit, a bit of variety. So one time you might fly the frigate, next time you'll fight a bunch of smaller enemy attack ships and so on and so forth. And depending on the difficulty you choose, you're going to have all of those options. So overall, this game seems to have a very complete package in what it tries to offer, a retro style Wing Commander-esque space combat simulator. And yes, it's an indie title with a very limited budget, so it's definitely rough around the edges on the visual side. You might already see that, and a bit of the UI is a little bit clunky, such as the rebindable keys. We could forgive all of that if the gameplay was good, right? So let's dive into some gameplay. I'm going to show you some uh, instant action missions, and I'll talk about some of the issues I encountered and why I did not enjoy my time with this game at all. So as this mission gets started, I want to talk a little bit about design choices in terms of mechanics as well as visuals, because there's a couple of things here that aren't great, but are acceptable. And it would have been fine if the rest of the game held up to the same scrutiny. It doesn't, and I'll get into that. First things first, the design decision of this game is that your cockpit is alive. The fuel and speed meters on top sort of provide a interactive feeling to you what is going on. You have your radar at the bottom. You have your zoomed in sort of in down sights kind of thing in the center. Your objectives on the left and each ship type from the small scout to the heavy fighter. All of them have different HUD layouts and different cockpit layouts and it provides slightly different information based on what is going on. For example, the heavy fighter doesn't actually show the distance to a target, and whether that is a mistake or by design, it does display a little bit of variety in what is going on. So these screens and the cockpit, and you can free move around in a cockpit if you want, I'll show that in a little bit when I'm out of combat, and look around the skybox and stuff. Overall, the entire idea of fighting a space sim is fantastic and if this was a VR title it would actually be pretty immersive in my opinion. You are standing in that cockpit, you're looking around, you have the entire HUD for you, you sort of have the control stick in your hands, you move around chasing enemies. Pretty decent, right? Except there's two issues with this. First is the entire rendering of your cockpit. Now I'm not talking about the low fidelity look of the graphics which definitely is a negative to the game. They could have definitely polished that up quite a bit. Now I'm talking about the way the entire screen sort of stutters and renders. I'm talking about the way there is no overview of your surroundings in any real tangible way. Your friendly allies don't communicate where they are around you in a good way. Yes, the radar at the bottom is a tiny little blob that shows big red and green triangles of where your enemies are approximately, but in reality this doesn't help you a ton. There is no way to select target from a list of available targets. You have to toggle through every single target. And yes, I get from a controller's perspective, from a console perspective, that might make sense because you don't have a mouse to go around and target something. But on a keyboard, you could make an alt binding that says, you know, have some free mouse movement while you're at it and select the relevant elements on your UI. And the game never takes advantage of that in any real way, which results in very frustrating toggling of trying to find target while you're trying to shoot down the target you're trying to lock onto so you can fire off some missiles. It's not very fluid, and it only really results in frustration and annoyances where it should invoke enjoyable dog fighting in space, and it really doesn't. So there's a couple of issues with that. Secondly, if you move on to the actual dog fighting, there's again two issues here. And those, again, come back to the controllers I have in mind. As I said, I'm never a great fan of playing these kinds of games with a controller. And there's two primary reasons for it. It's acceleration of movement, and it's the way the analog sticks are always single-dimensional movement. So what they have done, in essence, is translate a analog input from a thumbstick. So when you do a thumbstick very lightly or very heavily, the thumbstick can transfer the rate and pressure of the way you move your thumbstick to increase acceleration or turn speed and other stuff like that, including movement. But the way the game has done so is made a flat numbered movement. And all that really does is result in a very static turn cycle regardless of what you're doing. So you always feel like your ship is sort of freeform floating in the same speed at all times. Even if your speed is 47,000, I'm assuming, kilometers per hour versus 500 kilometers per hour, you don't really feel that difference in any tangible way because your turn cycles, your pitch and jaw cycles, your roll cycles, all are always very identical and very static, independent of any other interactivity you might have. Now, don't get me wrong. You'll notice the speed for sure when you're chasing an enemy or when you're trying to get around a ship 
because you do fly relative to them, but the actual feeling as a player is never properly conveyed. So while they have the idea right here, with a cockpit, an intense dogfighting sequence, in a asteroid belt chasing frigates and, and getting chased by enemies and trying to dodge them and lock onto them and chase missiles and all that cool, amazing stuff that we know from games such as Freelancer, and we love from those kinds of games, or if you go back further, Wing Commander, it never really does that in a tangible way. And that is a damn shame, because the actual gameplay lags behind the desired implementation, not the greatest thing. Now there's two more gameplay issues that really annoy the hell out of me. One is docking, and you'll notice in this uh, video here, I'll crash into a couple of things here and there for no other reason than finding the actual dock is more annoying and more tedious than the actual game. When the mission is over, you often have to head back to your ship and dock there to go dock in a very specific docking bay that's highlighted. The problem I have with that is that finding the actual dock is often nigh on impossible. And there's two reasons for this. One, by the time you get back to your primary ship, you may have been flying for two, three, four actual minutes to get back from away from the combat zone you were in. And because you were in combat, you were flying at high speeds, you might have drifted off course from where you originally planned to fight. So getting back to the ship, you come back, you see a big battleship in front of you, a big cruiser or a destroyer or something like that, and you want to dock in your docking port and you have no idea where on a ship the docking port is because all these ships are anonymous blobs in space. And if you have a bit of bad luck, there will be a sun flare behind that and you can't even see the ship properly from your cockpit and the onboard screening zoom thing that should sort of help you in low light vision, so that what it is designed for, doesn't do that either. So you are really just frustratingly trying to fly around the battleship to get in a position where you can find a single little square where you can dock into with your ship. Not exactly fun. Another issue is from the UI design standpoint in terms of conveying information. When you have to fight the target, there is these red squares on your overall HUD. These are again displayed in your radar or on your combat computer. But when you have to go back to your combat ship or you have an objective somewhere on the map, it doesn't display distances and you can't lock on to those freeform objective markers. So there's never a good indication of where you have to be, how far it is, how much travel time you have. So even though the game pretends to have fuel and you have to conserve fuel during longer combat missions and get back to your destroyer or your battleship to get refueled and retanked, all that sounds interesting and cool, but the bottom line is that you never pay attention to your fuel because by the point you need to conserve fuel in these combat missions, there is no need. One, you have no idea what the distances are that are involved because you just can't relate to any of them in any real way. Because what is 675,251 when I can get over it in a couple of seconds and did no tangible touch to my fuel reserves? Whereas a combat mission with a little bit of afterburn will burn through your fuel reserves immensely fast, but doesn't appear to change your speed in any real way. You don't accelerate much faster compared to the actual acceleration using your actual acceleration button, but it does burn a lot of fuel, so is there any benefit to using it? I don't think so. And there's a lot of the minor issues with the game, including the way speed works. Speed is one of my other frustrating things, and I can go on about the various frustrating experiences with this title, whereas I came into this title expecting a very enjoyable, cockpit-based space destruction derby. I expected dogfights, I expected interesting combat mechanics, I expected interesting enemies, starship, battle fleets, I expected group combat, chasing missions, all the good stuff. What I didn't expect was to get to those, I had to first struggle for two or three hours with the controller rebinding to figure out what actually worked, and I'm not even sure if I have a good set of control rebindings, I just have one that I can actually sort of play with. Then you have to deal with the fact that half the time the skybox and the UI itself fights against you, and then you have to deal with the way the game frankly looks kinda ugly. And yes, I get that this is an indie title, and I do accept that some indie titles have much smaller budgets than others, and sometimes concessions are made from graphics to gameplay, and I expect that. That is not a bad thing in general. If the aesthetic fits, if the way they've done everything is well put together, no issue whatsoever with a lower fidelity aesthetic. But when you add 3D graphics in your cutscenes, for example, and the lip syncing is so atrociously bad that even zoomed out, you can see that it's not even been tried to do. When you don't even put the effort of adding animations to your cockpit, that when you take a turn, the control stick that is in the middle of the screen, where your character's hand is all around it, doesn't even move or shift, then why even render it? It only obstructs from the gameplay in terms of adding visual clutter to your screen. In fact, here it obstructs a little bit of the combat radar you have in front of you. But 
it doesn't really add anything because you don't actually do anything with it. And the same goes for things like lens flares and the same goes for things like docking. Why do you need to dock at the end of a mission? Yes, I get during the campaign, you might want to immerse a player in getting into that mission and getting to dock back at a ship for refueling for the next mission or maybe repairs if you need that, I get that. But in a one-off combat mission, an instant action mission, there's no actual benefit to that. The mission is over. All that you're doing now is trying to annoy the player by making sure they don't crash into a ship while they fly around the ship 20 times to find a damn portal to get into the docking bay because there is no auto docking, there is no guidance in any visual indication of where the docking bay is on a ship you may never have seen before in that specific configuration. This game provides an interesting concept in terms of its space combat, it even provides very cool ships to fly in and fight with, from the small scout to the bigger combat vessels, missile base ships, gun turret base ships. Overall, I can recommend this from a ship flying perspective. It's, it's amazing sim fun in terms of starfighters. But everything surrounding the actual flying, from combat mechanics, from combat complexity, from the AI's behavior, to the way missions are structured, is all frustrating and annoying. And after several hours, I just didn't want to play anymore. The fun of flying a spaceship in orbit of an asteroid field and blowing up enemy aliens lost its appeal when for the so many of time I failed the mission because the docking bay was on the wrong side of the ship and you couldn't break in time to get around to it. It's not exactly great fun. Now that said, the game does have a full-fledged campaign mode. And there again are a couple of issues here. And this is a recurring theme with the game as well. It is not exactly polished. Even when the gameplay feels complete, even then it has its own issues. A good example here is the very first mission, where you are given the task to escort a couple of civilian transport ships through a warp gate of some kind, and then there's an enemy fighter that sort of attacks you out of nowhere, and you have to get back to the ships to warp them. After trying that mission four times, and four times having that mission break on me and not continue with the next objective, all it said was get back to the transport ships. When you crash into the damn transport ships, so you assume you're back at them, it doesn't even update the objective in any way, shape or form. It just sort of sticks around there for a good 10 minutes. I even tried going between different freight ships and nothing really happened. So that mission broke a couple of times. Various instant action missions broke a few times. Various gameplay mechanics, such as the speed limit on certain ships also broke. A heavier ship has a speed limit of 34,000. But if you use the afterburner, you can go a little bit higher than that. But but the problem is that some of the ships have a higher speed limit and apparently if you skip the lower speed limit into a higher speed limit with afterburners, you sort of stick with that higher speed even when you turn off afterburners. And that again is one of those weird bugs that I just don't get and I should never have passed QA because it's so easy to reproduce I found it by accident in the first 5 minutes of playing the game. Overall, Starfighter's Origin has a solid idea, but it's either a lack of knowledge or experience on the developer's end, or they're trying to push out many games at the same time using the same tech, because this is their third or fourth game with this sort of same aesthetic and sort of idea behind it, one of them currently still in early access. They're not taking the time to develop these games fully, just cobbling them together and throwing them out there. I don't know for sure, and I don't want to make any accusations or point fingers at anyone, but as it stands, Starfighter's Origin is a subpar experience for a genre that does deserve some love, and it doesn't get any in general, and this title doesn't do it any justice when it tries to give it some love. Overall, my time with Starfighter Origin was a bit of a disappointment. I greatly expected an enjoyable fighting space combat sim, and what I got was a bland looking buggy affair that tries to give you space combat and has all the negatives of Wing Command and none of the positives of enjoyable space combat. So if you like what you see, check out Starfighter Origins on Steam, it comes out on April 25th. There's a link in the description down below for exactly that purpose. Honestly, I'd skip this one and see and wait for some other cool Starfighter games that are definitely on the horizon. And if you like this video, press that like button. If you didn't like this video, there's a dislike button for exactly that purpose and leave a comment when I hear back from all of you. And if you want to see more content like this on the channel, just press that subscribe button down below and we will deliver. Until then, I wish you a good day and until next time, right here, Guy Logic Gaming.